I am Vision. Uh... Alright, let's get this started with people. I'm wearing the headlight the whole time. Let's start off today with the Reader's Digest. This is the October 2023 issue. Let's get this started with right now. Alright, uh, speaking of which, there's actually pretty many things I'm going to have to explain to you guys. Let's start off with... Adventures in Babysitting! Now, treasure memories from modern day Mary Poppinses and Daffy, my dear Mrs. Doubtfires. Let me explain. Now, you're after, uh, here are actually a few tales of Adventures in Babysitting. First of all, we're gonna have to talk about uh, how you can take out a tattle tailor. Now, let's. Now, a friend was babysitting for five kids and found crayon scribbles all over the wall. And he knew the culprit wouldn't go down easy, so he cleverly asked. Who drew those beautiful drawings on that wall? And then, of course, the guilty party announced, I did! Nice. Next, we have dropping, the, picking up the ball. So, uh, this offer, uh, the offer of this particular story said that she, she uh, babysat her sister and her friend every New Year's Eve. And they'd have their own little party with snacks and sparkling grape juice. And the girls didn't know this, but their time zone was an hour behind New York City's. So, every year... At 11 p.m., they watched the ball drop, and then they went off to bed. And then she was free to go ahead and watch whatever she wanted. Fortunately, when her sisters actually realized years later, she thought it was funny and literally clever. Clever! Enough joking around with the headlight. Next up, bedtime means bedtime. So apparently, this uh, par this guy's parents actually were going out to dinner with their neighbors. And they asked if he could babysit their young kids. And they wanted the kids in bed at 8 p.m., which was no problem. And when they came home, they found the kids sound asleep, but they couldn't literally find her. Now, apparently, he got to bed, he got home and to bed. And his job, well, he thought that his job was over. Or at least, he thought it was. Next up, help yourself! Now, the author of the story said that he and his wife actually left for the evening, and she and they told her the babysitter that she could go ahead and help herself to anything in the fridge. And three years later, they came home to a cheerful teenager kneeling in front of an open door and frantically scraping a mountain of melted plastic from the inside. Now, they'd actually left out one very important instruction. Help yourself, but make sure you remove the Tupperware we store in the oven before firing it up. Nice. No. All right. Next up, we have fake it to it to make it. Now, uh, now apparently this uh one was like this person was twelve years old and she was doing a lot of babysitting. Now, once she was left in charge of four kids and then she asked them all their names and ages. And imagine, imagine to this guy's surprise that one of their people, one of the people, were actually the first boy was a year older than her, or him, and. And he, or she, was tall for her age, or his age, and she was short. And so, the guy didn't actually tell them that she was, that their big sister was act, they were act, they're actually, actually their big sisters was their guy's junior. Now next up, a dark and humid night. So, apparently they left their little girls with a babysitter and returned home to a pitch black house. So they opened the door and they realized that... Uh, they heard all that. Apparently, the, apparently the the house was like out of electricity, and uh, apparently the hot summer actually fried the electrical wares. So they sat in total darkness because they could not find the flashlight. Huh? Why don't they just have headlights, eh? Very dog friendly neighborhood. Now, her there. Okay, so this guy's dog, Cherry Peters. Uh, Cherry, I. Sp Okay, is this a boy or a girl? Anyways, the dog, Cooper, would hang out on the porch every time he or she babysat their neighbor. Now, one day, the kid, like, Cooper, and his son, I don't think your folks would, like, want Cooper in there. And he told them, it's fine, Mom does it all the time, and you're blind. And he didn't believe him, and he didn't believe him, and asked his mother when she got home. Oh, no, I really do, she said. He stops by every morning and let him finish the leftover cat food. What? And then, yeah, Cooper was on a diet, so I asked her not to feed him. And you'll need to tell the Smiths, the Johnson, and the Miss Evans... She keeps biscuits on her just for him. Yeah, this is gonna be terrible. Alright, next up, how I tried to stop snoring! Now, apparently they wanted a quick fix, even if it meant strapping a glorified bike pump to the face. So, apparently the story itself is about a guy named Jordan Foisy, and he's tried to stop sleep. 
tried to stop snoring. Apparently, ever since he started living with his girlfriend, they would always have little fights every morning because apparently he was snoring too much. Apparently, because she, he was snoring too much, they fight and fight and fight, and they tried everything. Nothing worked. And finally, they had. And finally, he was like, "Fine, I'll go to doctor. I don't need a doctor anyway." Yeah. And so apparently, the doctor told him that he looked depressed. And after that, he went into therapy and he tried everything to stop his snoring. And apparently, nothing worked. Nothing. After two months, the results of the sleep study came in, and apparently, it was terrible. He still snores though. He keeps snoring, and there's nothing that could change that. In fact, his snoring has probably got worse. But however, they did make a pretty good sleep schedule, so they could probably live with that. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it for this story. Alright, next up is actually a pretty big deal. Drama in real life. Nightmare at the nightclub. When the shooting started, a combat veteran's life-saving insects kicked in. This was written by Dave Phillips. Now, apparently there was this guy... There was this guy named Richard M. Flero, and he was at the he was at a table at Club Q with his wife, daughter, and friends on a Saturday night last November when the sudden flash of a gunfire actually ripped across the nightclub. And his instincts, as he was in the army, I was fresh out of the army, was just kicked in, which was forged under four combat deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, and those instantly kicked in. Fight back, he actually told himself. Protect your people. Now, Fierro, 45, who actually spent almost 15 years as an army officer, has actually left as a major in 2013. And he was charged throughout the chaos and tackled the gunman, beating him bloody with a shooter's own gun. So apparently it didn't happen like this. He called himself, I'm just a dude, a fat old vet, but I knew I had to do something. And yeah, that was pretty darn important. Fierro himself was actually trying to stop all this law, this, uh, this army stuff because it was actually getting into his life he was having a hard time sleeping he was ha he was always talking like a military officer he was getting having anger issues and yeah he was too destructful and distrustful and lots of other things that seemed to happen too now apparently Pharaoh yelled as if he was back in com combat like when this happened like casualties casualties i need a medic here now right now but that night at club q which was supposed to just be a fa little family outing turned into something else. A bullet sprayed across the bar, smashing bottles and glasses. People screamed, and Fierro actually looked and up and saw a figure as big as a bear, easily more than 300 pounds, wearing body armor and carrying a rifle a lot like the one he had carried in Iraq. And the shooter was moving through the bar toward a door leading to a patio where dozens of people had actually fled. Now, the lung-suppressed instincts of platoon leaders surged back to life, and Fierro raced across the room, grabbed the gunman by the handle on the back of his body armor, and pulled him to the floor and jumped on top of him. Like, was shooting at the time? He has no idea. However, he went ahead and kicked the gun off, and then when he went to scramble towards the pist the gun, he, realized, he found out that he was being shot at blank point range at of a pistol, and he just, without thinking, grabbed the pistol and started, sh like, hitting the hell out of the man. I grabbed the pistol, stunned the man, and started hitting him in the face. And I ordered everyone else to do things. A dancer walked by, and then he told her, Use your high heels and step on his face! And then he found someone nearby and said, Grab the gun! Yeah, and then he grabbed the gun, and then he and the guy gave him the gun, and he started blasting the guy's face. So, the guy luckily didn't die. And however, he was covered in blood, so like, POLICE! And when the police came in, they were like, HE'S THE SHOOTER! HE JUST KILLED SOMEONE! And they started arresting him. They realized he was legit, and then he was out. And now here's an editor's note. On June 26, Anderson Lee Aldridge actually pleaded guilty to five counts of murder in the first degree, 46 counts of attempted murder in the first degree, and no contest to two bias-motivated crimes. Aldridge received five consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole and 46 consecutive 48-year sentences. On that day, five people died, including the, uh, the guy's the daughter's the boyfriend, and yeah. Pretty sure his name was Anderson Green. Raymond Green, sorry, Raymond Green. So that's it. Falling into fall. Now, whether you like it or not, autumn is here and it's going to be get really, really hot. Like cold, I mean. Really, really cold. Now, here in Shenzhen, to be honest, it's pretty cold. Now, it's the winter phase is over, and so it's starting to get warmer. But I'm wearing a t-shirt inside, it's just that the, the house itself is a bird! hot right now in my opinion now at least 
autumn itself is here. Um, at least we'll get cooler winter now. And the thing is, there's actually lots of things here. In fact, winter actually gets depression, but this is like summer and winter combined. Like the little mild thing in between that actually lets you go ahead and go ahead to do things. This is the season of resilience. Uh, where Jelena Kekmaglonik, the founder of Arlington DC Behavior Therapy Institution, the fall is reminiscent of exploring the mountains near her former homes in like Sarajevo and in what was the Yugoslavia. And she actually spent the first 20 years of her life there during one of the country's most prosperous eras. But in the 1990s, she was forced to flee during a bloody four-year siege of her city. Aww. Now, today she's an ex expert in resilience, and that is pretty darn important. And this is a season of experience, of resilience. It's also the season of mindfulness, because you kind of need quietness. And finally, we have the already list. The read, watch, listen. The Reader's Digest list of read, watch, listen. Now, the film, A Haunting in Venice. If you actually read Agatha Christie's book, Agatha Christie's Halloween it's pretty sure you say it like that. Halloween party. It's actually based. The hunting in Venice is actually based here. Instead of like, instead of like the setting of English countryside, it's turned to a scene as Venice Palazzo. And this is where the building suit tries to figure out who murdered a guest. Now it doesn't actually take a celebrity doc detective to deduce that Brown has a good thing going with the Christie Wood units. And this is the third remake. After after his murder on the Orient Express in 2017 and death on the Nile, Nile 2022. And this point, Poirot has to face some ghosts across this long dark night of the soul of this entrapment. Nice. So you can watch the movie now. And it's based on this book. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode, wherever you are, whenever you are, be safe, be smiling, be nice, be a vision! And always, wear a helmet. Where's my helmet? Oh well. Bye guys! Vision!